Hey guys, today we're going to show you six different ways to use ghost pick. Might as well get this too. All right, let's try this again. Today we're going to show you six different ways to use beaver dust ghost pigments. So the first way is burning the live edge and then applying the ghost pigment, which really pops on the burnt edge. And we'll show you a few things we did wrong with this as well. Uh, we're still learning every day and, and yeah, a couple lessons here. These guys, we're going to show you how the pigments can be mixed with other pigments uh, on their own without any sort of substrate like wood. And then lastly, you have to wait till the end to see this one finish, but this one's really going to pop when it's done. So we'll teach you all about those techniques as well. First things first, we're going to address our box elder burl so we get it all one consistent thickness. And then we've got to remove some bark. We just use a draw knife to remove the bark. It normally makes quick work of it, but sometimes it can be a challenge on these funky edges. And then we'll use the restorer and a wire brush to finish the job. Now that the piece is cleaned up, we're gonna use our template here to cut our pieces to size. This piece was a little large to use on the bandsaw, so we're just trimming it down to make it easier to cut the radius on the bandsaw. Now that our pieces are cut to size, we're just going to do a little more cleanup to remove some of that excess bark to expose the gnarly edges on this piece. Now we're going to use a torch to blacken the edges. One of the keys with ghost pigments for this application is to apply the pigment over a black base because the pigment reacts well to a, a black bottom layer. You don't want to overburn your piece where you lose all those funky edges because those funky edges are going to give you a lot of texture and a lot more visual appeal. This method will require the beaver dust ghost pigments as well as some West System faster curing epoxy. What we're gonna do is mix the epoxy and the pigment together and then brush that epoxy onto the live edges. We're using ghost amethyst first and you're gonna to wanna to go pretty heavy on the pigment because you want that epoxy to be very opaque and not translucent. Once you've thoroughly mixed the epoxy and the pigment together, you can start to brush it on the live edge. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can kind of use as much or as little as you want, but you'll really see the color pop once you apply it over that burnt edge. It's deceiving when you first mix up that pigment. It just looks kind of white or beige and after you apply it over that dark edge in a thin layer, you really see that color pop. In hindsight, we probably should have stopped there and just left the color as is, but the way we are is we like to try new things and push the limits, so we mixed up another batch and applied more. You'll notice how the blue on its own looks much more vibrant and nice than when it's mixed on top of another color. But I guess that kind of leads to uh, our first major lesson that we learned while messing around. And if you're going to pick a color, just stick with that one color. As soon as you start mixing other ghost pigments on top and making it more convoluted, it just doesn't look good. So I would stick with one color, maybe a second color, but experiment first. After that epoxy edge has cured, we grab our Ecopoxy Flowcast SPR and we'll mix up a batch of this. The reason we're using this epoxy is because it works really well for these one inch thick pores. It cures a little faster than the normal Flowcast, which is important because we want this to cure overnight. We 
we use a degassing chamber because we want this to be clear when it's cured and this degassing chamber will remove all those micro bubbles so that it cures nice and clear. All right, we've given the epoxy a day to cure and now it's time to remove it from the silicone mold. Okay guys, now that you saw us finish up with this technique, we're gonna move on to these pieces. So what we did here was we mixed the ghost pigments with black pearl. And on these ones, we poured them on a black base, which gives you another different effect. These ones are just mixed with epoxy, so no other colors. And then these are mixed with other pigments. First things first, we're gonna mix up some epoxy with some liquid opaque black pigment. These are gonna be the base for a top pour later, but we wanna get these poured so they can cure up before we pour the next layer. These small silicone molds are perfect for experimenting before you do a larger application. So this is a perfect testing size where you're not wasting too much epoxy. Now that the black base layer is cured up, we're gonna mix up some ghost green with epoxy and pour that right over top of the black base layer. And you'll really see that green pop out once it settles in. You can really see the different effects when you do a very thin layer, such as the last project where the color is more vibrant, but this is a thicker layer on a black base and that color is less vibrant and in your face it's a little more subtle. We're going to do the same technique here with the ghost amethyst which is kind of like a purpley red tone to it. So that gives you an idea of what a 1 8 inch thick top layer of ghost pigment looks like on a black base. If you want more color out of that top layer, just pour it a little bit thinner, maybe go a 16th of an inch deep. That way you'll get more of that green popping out. Next up, we're going to use the black pearl metallic pigment and mix that direct with some ghost gold. So you'll see what those pigments look like mixed together. This combination creates a, a look that you can't really achieve with one pigment on their own. You really need that black base color mixed in with that metallic sort of ghost pigment as well. You whip up my appetite. Don't leave me here. Another quick tip here is you can see areas where we didn't fully mix the ghost pigment in with the black, so that's what those white little specks are. Oh. 
Here's a second example using the black pearl and ghost violet to create that deep dark purple color. Again, here you can see little white specks and that's caused from not mixing thoroughly enough before we poured. Next up, we're gonna mix up some ghost green and ghost blue on their own and pour that so you can see how these pigments look when they're used all by themselves. Typically when used by themselves, it can have a slightly underwhelming effect. It's just got a shimmer of blue or green or whatever that ghost color is that you're using. So some people like it, some people don't like it, but it's a good way to get just a shimmer of color in a otherwise sort of white or pearl looking pour. The next method we're gonna show you is mixing a couple of mica powders along with ghost pigments. We use some gunmetal gray along with the ghost blue. And this kind of gives you a grayish blue look. That blue pops a little more than when it's just on its own, but a little less than when you mix it with black. This is one of the more unique looks that you can achieve using the ghost pigments when mixing it with other mica powders. So feel free to experiment with different blues, reds, other dark tones that you can mix ghost pigments into. Next up, we're gonna mix some black pearl with some ultramarine blue. And lastly, we're gonna add in the ghost violet. As you can see here, mixing many different pigments together can create a wide range of colors and tones and you get some nice purple undertones in this one. You know, anything goes, there's no right or wrong, but we always recommend doing a smaller sample before you pour a large project to make sure you get that color just right. One last thing to note is if you pour these at, you know, a one to two inch thickness with a little bit less pigment, you'll get those exothermic reaction swirls and you know that kind of character in the pour where we pour these really heavy and really shallow. So that's why you're getting more of an opaque look with less exothermic reaction. Now that you've seen these techniques, the last one, we're gonna show you this. We achieved this by using one of our router templates to create the snake inlay and then using fire to darken the inside of the inlay and then we use some ghost pigments to achieve this effect, but it's not done here, but wait till you see it finished, it'll be awesome. First things first, we grabbed a piece of Osage orange, which is actually more yellow when you look at it, but we wanted something to contrast the blue nicely and we figured that yellow would pop. For this project, we're just making a bottle opener, so we only needed about half the board, so we're gonna chop it down now so it's easier to work. Quick little PSA here, we should have had the blade lower and using our hand instead of a push stick here or a larger push stick that kept pressure more in the middle of the board and not just on the end. So, you know, we're human, we make mistakes too, but just wanted to mention that so we make sure people are being safe in their shop and not using our techniques that were incorrect here. We're gonna use our router template. This is the snake pattern and we're gonna attach it to our board and route the pattern out.
Once we've got our desired depth, we remove the template and then we grab our torch to make the inside of the cutout black. Once we're done with the torch, we just give it a quick sand on the surface. And we use a sanding block just to take down any high spots. The technique we're using here is similar to the first project where we're mixing up a ghost blue pigment and applying it over a black base. Once that brushed on base layer cures, we're ready to pour some clear epoxy to fill in the rest of the void. Typically when filling a void like this with normal sort of epoxy and pigment, it ends up with a kind of a flat look where this has more dimension to it because you're looking through the clear epoxy to the colored bottom of the cutout. After a couple passes through the drum sander, we're going to use this template to get a nice radius on the top and then we're going to cut that on the bandsaw. And after a few passes on the spindle sander, we're ready to sand this piece up and get it closer to the finish line. Now that we've got our piece sanded up, we're ready to apply some Rubio Monocoat oil finish. Next up, we're going to attach the bottle opener. This is just the cast iron bottle opener, but there's a few different options you could add for a project like this. Now you've seen us use these pigments six different ways. Let us know what was your favorite application for these. Uh, there's a lot more that could be done with these than just using them on their own like this. So yeah, let us know what technique was your favorite. And we have five different ghost pigments on our website, jeffmaxsupply.com. So check those out if you want to start experimenting. Thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button for more content like this.